Hello and welcome back to our Stealth AI series. In the last episode, we got our character to, or our guard rather, to follow a patrol path. And what we're going to do in this episode is finish that off by making it so he can rotate to face a certain direction at each path point. So it's sort of like scanning the area. And also change his walk speed at each path point as well. So you can customise how fast they travel along it. So let's get started with the rotation part. So I'm going to go into my behaviour tree. And in here, we're going to go to new task up top and choose BT task blueprint base. And we're going to rename this one uh, to rotate uh, guard uh, on point task. Okay. And in here, we're going to start things off with, as always with a receive execute AI. And after that, we're going to get the controlled pawn and cast to our guard enemy. Now, the reason why we're casting is because we need to get hold of what patrol path point they're at. So from the guard enemy, get current path index. And also get patrol path. And from there, you want to get from the array, get a copy and choose that integer from that there and that'll give us the actual path that we need now the function we're going to be using is move component 2 so after you've done the cast you're going to drag out and do a move component 2 and the move component 2 is what we call a latent function and you can tell it's latent because there's this little clock icon and what that means is that this function is going to continue asynchronously over time um, and won't end until it ends until it, it runs off completed here so what it does, it moves a component in the world to a certain location of rotation over a certain amount of time, and that's it. So we're going to take the rotation of our path point. So get point here, get rotation, and plug that into target relative rotation. We're then going to get from the enemy cast here and get root component. And that will be the component that goes there. And we also want to get the relative location of this uh, component as well, or as the enemy, whatever you want to do. So we're going to get the root component, get location, and plug that into it there too. So it's going to stand still, it's staying in the same location, but it's just going to turn around. And you can control how well it turns around, you can turn it to ease in or ease out, how long it takes. And one thing we want to do is tick this force shortest rotation path. And that way it won't do like a 360 spin to just turn left a little bit. Um, it will just always turn whichever one's closest. Uh, and you can customize over time how much you want. It's totally up to you. But we'll leave it at 0.2 for now. And on completed, you're going to drag out and do a finish execute. Making sure you tick the success box. So to go over this, again, we've got the guard enemy. We're getting what path we're currently at. Again, it's rotation of that path point and plugging it into our move component too. That's the thing that's going to be happening. Make sure we don't move anywhere. We're going to stay and use our own current world location as the target location so it doesn't go anywhere. And we're leaving it over time at 0.2, but we've ticked the force, force shoot, shortest rotation path to make sure it doesn't do any weird spins to get to a, uh, a rotation. And, and that's it. So we hit compile and go back to our behavior tree and you're going to put this in after the move two so after move two drag that out and do rotate guard on point task and that's it so it goes find path point move to path point rotate on path point ro uh, wait and then reach path point task hit save and let's go and check that out so he should now turn and face whatever point is there you go, he's turned and faced whichever way the point is told him to face. Goes this one, turns perfectly. And he'll go to the next one. And there you go. Perfect. So there you go, he got him rotating around on the spot. So now let's slow him down a little bit. So I'm going to go onto my find path point task here. And we're going to make a new variable on here. And this is going to be a uh, walk speed. And this will be a float. And make it editable by ticking the little editable box. 
Okay, so at the end, before we finish executing, I'm going to drag this out a bit more. And we're going to drag out guard any pawn reference that we made in the last episode, which is get. And from there, you want to get character movement. And you'll see get character movement. And then from that, you can set max walk speed. And the max walk speed you're going to put in there is going to come from this variable that we just made. So drag that in, slot that in. Hit compile and set the default value for walk speed to 600. That's the default running speed of all characters in Unreal. So we'll leave it like that. And that's it. So now if you go back to the behavior tree, you can now see walk speed is now a selectable option on your task. So I can customize this here to whatever I like. So let's say 300. So it goes half the speed. Push play. And off he goes. Okay. So let's make that a bit slower. I want it a bit slower than that. Let's try 150. We want just to walk it basically. Push play. I think the animations that come with the animation start pack are not great, but there you go. We work with what we've got. There you go. Okay, so we've got him walking along that space. So I went into the animation start pack and tweaked the blend space that came with it to include the walking with iron sight. So at least he walks now. Um and looks a bit more a bit more like it. Um if you don't know how to do that, all I did was I go into the blend space for the jog and I added these walk animations to the blend space. I've got backwards on either side here, forward in the middle, left and then right. I put them about halfway into the graph. Uh, I just I deleted the previous jog ones that were in there, so just keeping the jog ones up top here. So you get this walking stuff going on up here. Okay. So that's the way we've done it there. And that seemed to work just quite nicely. With that speed that I just sat there. So then we've got a guard. Perfect. Okay, so um, let's show you adding more guards to this then. So if I were to add another guard to this one and make him do the other way around. So let's go into here, drag another guard out, and go to the patrol path, add patrol point, and we're going to do it the other way around. So we can click this one first, add another one that point and another one that point and then finally that point and we're telling to loop back as well patrol back and hit play so now we've got two guards and they should now cross each other's paths as they make their way around this patrol path so Later on, we're going to work on our character in our next episode to be able to sneak up behind enemies and uh, be able to get seen by them and they'll be able to hear us uh, and then moving on to execution so we can sneak up behind them and execute them. So for that, we need to work on our stealth mechanics. So they're going to start off with the sight perception and then work on our hearing perception. So join us in the next episode where we start working on perception. And uh, you can watch that right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where all my patrons get access to all my videos months ahead from anyone else. So thank you to all my patrons for their continued support, as all this is all possible because of you guys. So thank you so, so much. If you're watching this on YouTube and you've not yet subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit the subscription button. And uh, that way you don't miss out on any of the content I release weekly. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.